In this lesson, we're going to discuss some results from neutral geometry. So we finished presenting David Hilbert's axioms of incidence, betweenness, congruence, continuity, and parallelism. So to prove results in neutral geometry, we're going to take a neutral stance on the parallelism axioms. And so we're not going to assume the parallelism axiom at, at all for any of these results. So neutral geometry consists of all geometric theorems that can be proved using only the axioms of incidence, betweenness, congruence, and continuity without using the axiom of parallelism. So why are we studying neutral geometry? So we're not interested in studying it for its own sake, but by eliminating the assumption of the parallel postulate, we can actually clarify the role of the parallel postulate by seeing which theorems we can prove without assuming anything about parallel lines. So in neutral geometry, we're seeking out theorems that we can prove that do not depend on the parallel postulate. So before we look at some results in neutral geometry, we're going to need the following definition. Let T be a transversal to lines L and L prime, with T meeting L at point B and L prime at point B prime, then choose points A and C on line L such that B is between A and C, and choose A prime and C prime on L prime such that A and A prime are on the same side of T, and such that B prime is between A prime and C prime. So the drawing here on the bottom right is an example of this type of setup. Then the following four angles are called interior angles. Angle A prime, B prime, B, angle A, B, B prime, angle C prime, B prime, B, and angle C, B, B prime. So these are the interior angles of the lines L and L prime with transversal T. Let's look at the definition of alternate interior angles. The pair angle A prime, B prime, B, and angle C, B, B prime is a pair of alternate interior angles. And so is the pair of angles A, B, B prime and angle C prime, B prime, B. So we need the definition of interior angles and alternate interior angles for future results. Theorem 4.1, the alternate interior angle theorem, states that if two lines cut by a transversal have a pair of congruent alternate interior angles, then the two lines are parallel. Now in some textbooks, this is actually called the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem. So you might be more familiar with, with the converse of the statement that if two lines cut by transversal are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. But we can't prove that without assuming the parallel postulate. But this theorem 4.1 is a result of neutral geometry. So let's look at the proof. So given the setup that we had in the previous diagram, let's assume that the alternate interior angles are congruent. Angles A prime, B prime, B is congruent to angle C, B, B prime. And then let's assume to the contrary that L and L prime are not parallel and that they meet at point D. I'm going to assume further that D is on the same side of the transversal T as point C and C prime. Then by congruence axiom one, there's a point E on ray B prime A prime, such that segment B prime E is congruent to BD. Then segment B B prime is congruent to itself. And therefore using the side angle side criterion, we can conclude that triangle B prime B D is congruent to triangle B B prime E. Then using corresponding parts of congruent triangles, we can say that angle D B prime B is congruent to angle E B B prime. Then it helps look at the diagram for this next statement. Since D B prime B is the supplement of angle E B prime B, then angle E B B prime must be the supplement of angle D B B prime. By proposition 3.14, it states that supplements of congruent angles are congruent, and by congruence axiom four. 
But if angle E, B, B prime is the supplement of angle D, B, B prime, then E must lie on line L. But recall we assumed earlier that D also lies on line L. So then E and D both lie on both lines, on L and L prime. But this is a contradiction to proposition 2.1. So therefore, it must be that, that L is parallel to L prime. So the alternate interior angle theorem has two very important corollaries. The first one, two lines perpendicular to the same line are parallel. Hence the perpendicular drop from point P not on line L to L is unique. And the point at which the perpendicular intersects L is called its foot. And the second corollary states that if L is any line, and P is any point not on line L, then there exists at least one line M through P that's parallel to L. So this is an important result of neutral geometry. We know that there's at least one line through P that's parallel to L. But we still can't prove that there's a unique line, exactly one line, because that would have to assume Hilbert's parallel postulate and we're not assuming anything about the parallel postulates. Next, before we talk about the exterior angle theorem, we need the following definitions. An angle supplementary to an angle of a triangle is called an exterior angle. The two angles not adjacent to an exterior angle are called the remote interior angles of that exterior angle. So in this diagram, Angle ACD is an exterior angle, and its remote interior angles are angle A and angle B. Next, we'll present theorem 4.2, the exterior angle theorem, which states that an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than either remote interior angle. So with this diagram again, angle ACD is greater than angle A and greater than angle B. Next, we're going to take a look at several propositions that can be proved in neutral geometry. Proposition 4.1, the side angle angle congruence criterion for congruent triangles, which states AC congruent to DF, angle A congruent to angle D, and angle B congruent to angle E, then we can conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Proposition 4.2 is also known as the hypotenuse leg theorem or proposition. It states that two right triangles are congruent if the hypotenuse and a leg of one are congruent respectively to the hypotenuse and leg of the other. Proposition 4.3 states that every segment has a unique midpoint. Proposition 4.4 Part A states that every angle has a unique bisector, and Part B, every segment has a unique perpendicular bisector. Proposition 4.5, in a triangle ABC, the greater angle lies opposite the greater side, and the greater side lies opposite the greater angle. So that is, AB is greater than BC, if and only if, angle C is greater than angle A. Proposition 4.6 states that given a triangle ABC and triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, if AB is congruent to A prime, B prime, and BC is congruent to B prime, C prime, then angle B is less than angle B prime if and only if AC is less than A prime, C prime. So far in our treatment of geometry, we haven't used any numbers that measure the sizes of angles or segments. So this was keeping in the spirit of Euclid. But we can actually use the next theorem just to prove the possibility of, of having measures of angles. So theorem 4.3 on angle measures in degrees 
states that there's a unique way of assigning a degree measure to each angle with the following properties. This notation with parentheses around angle A and the degree mark is the notation used for the number of degrees in angle A. So the degree measure of angle A is a real number between 0 degrees and 180 degrees. Property 1, the degree measure of A is 90 degrees if and only if angle A is a right angle. Number 2, the degree measure of A equals the degree measure of B if and only if angle A is congruent to angle B. Property 3, if ray AC is interior to angle DAB, then the measure of angle DAB equals the measure of angle DAC plus the measure of angle CAB. Property 4, for every real number x between 0 and 180, there exists an angle A such that the measure of angle A is equal to x degrees. Property 5, if B is supplementary to angle A, then the degree measure of A plus the degree measure of B equals 180 degrees. And property 6, the measure of angle A is greater than the measure of angle B if and only if angle A is greater than angle B. So now we can present the Sakari Legendre's theorem, which states that the sum of the degree measures of the three angles in any triangle is less than or equal to 180 degrees. This result might seem odd at first because we're used to the result that the exact sum of the degree measures of the three angles should equal 180 degrees. But that theorem cannot be proven in neutral geometry. So it requires the assumption of Hilbert's parallel postulate or Euclid's parallel postulate. So as a result of neutral geometry, we can only state that the angle sum of a triangle is less than or equal to 180 degrees. So, so far, all the results we've looked at have been results of neutral geometry where we did not assume any of the parallel postulates. Now we're going to take a look at several statements that are actually equivalent to Hilbert's parallel postulate. First, we're going to state the fact that Euclid's parallel postulate is equivalent to Hilbert's parallel postulate. Now that we've defined all the terms in the statement, we can write Euclid's parallel postulate in the following form. If two lines are intersected by a transversal in such a way that the sum of the degree measures of the two interior angles on one side of the transversal is less than 180 degrees, then the two lines meet on that side of the transversal. And recall Hilbert's parallel postulate for every line L and for every point P not lying on L, there is at most one line M through P such that M is parallel to L. So it's actually a fact, theorem 4.5, that Euclid's parallel postulate is true if and only if Hilbert's parallel postulate is true. So we're not proving either one of these statements. What we're saying is that we can prove one if we first assume the other. So there, these statements are logically equivalent to each other. So theorem 4.5 allows us to use these statements interchangeably in the context of neutral geometry. Next, we're going to look at several statements that are also logically equivalent to the Euclid's parallel postulate. So we said Euclid's parallel postulate is logically equivalent to Hilbert's parallel postulate. And this statement is true if and only if a line intersects one of two parallel lines, then it also intersects the other. This is logically equivalent to the converse of theorem 4.1. So that is the fact that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. 
this is also logically equivalent to mm -hmm. the statement, if T is a transversal to lines L and M, L is parallel to M, and the transversal T is perpendicular to L, then T is perpendicular to M. This is also logically equivalent to the statement if K is parallel to L, M is perpendicular to K, and N is perpendicular to L, then either M is equal to N or M is parallel to N. And finally, this is logically equivalent to the statement, the angle sum of every triangle is 180 degrees. So all of these statements are logically equivalent. So if we can assume one, then we can prove any of the others. And it's actually a fact that there is an infinite number of statements that are logically equivalent to these statements.